There are going to be many what ifs on the day of judgment. If only I would have. And every single person who enters into the fire of hell will see the potential palace and paradise that they would have had. Imagine the regret of Fir'aun. SubhanAllah, can you imagine if Fir'aun would have become Muslim? If Fir'aun would have listened to the da'wah of Musa alayhi salam and said, this kingdom is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have repented to Allah. Imagine the palace that Allah would have given to him in exchange for the one he would have given up in this life. But instead, Fir'aun on the day of judgment before he is cast into his place in hellfire will see what could have been of that palace while Asiya alayhi salam enters into the palace that she saw while she was still being persecuted by Fir'aun in this dunya. What could have been? It could have been this, it could have been that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this phenomenon on the day of judgment of the what ifs. On that day, as everyone sees the proceedings of the day of judgment taking place, everyone will know what they have put forth and what they left behind. Some of the Mufassireen, they say what they have put forth of sins and what they have left behind of opportunities to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you look at that day as it is unfolding before your eyes, you'll remember the many days that you could have done something more. The many blessings that you could have used for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the what ifs, there are a lot of lows, a lot of what ifs that are quoted in the context of the day of judgment when you look through the Quran. And subhanAllah, the best of you comes out when you see the worst of consequence. And that's why Allah Azza wa says that when the people of hellfire, when people see hellfire, when they're finally about to enter, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us amongst those people that enter into the fire. May Allah spare us from it entirely. Allahumma ameen. When the people enter into the fire, they would say, لو أن لي كرة, if I had another chance, I would not just be from the Muslims. I wouldn't just be from the believers. أكون من المحسنين. I would be from those who excel. I would be from the best of the best. I would be from the people who prayed more, the people who fasted more, the people who gave more, the people who dedicated more. If I had another chance, Allah would see what I'm truly capable of, what I truly could have. But at that point, it's too late. You see, there were a lot of people that lived in the life of the Prophet Wasallam that had a moment where they could have made a choice. There are many people left behind in Mecca who probably at some point thought about becoming Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ made hijrah after that decade of difficulty. There are many people who we will never know who probably thought about it when they heard the Prophet ﷺ and said, you know what, not worth it. Not worth the risk. Let me stay behind and see how this plays out. And perhaps they didn't live to see Fatih Mecca. They didn't live to see the end of that story. And so their what if becomes a source of regret rather than a source of relief on the Day of Judgment. On the other hand, think of all the people on the Day of Judgment who say, Alhamdulillah, I listened. Alhamdulillah, I heeded that advice. Alhamdulillah, I heard that khutbah when I heard it. Alhamdulillah, I heard that lecture when I heard it. Alhamdulillah, I listened to that friend when I listened to that friend. Alhamdulillah, I took into consideration that proper introspection when I did and I didn't wait until it was too late. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And so the motto of the people of paradise is Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. The motto of the people of hellfire is Ya Hasrata. Oh, how I regret. All praises be to Allah for enabling me. Oh, how I regret not doing what Allah enabled me to do when I was in dunya. The people in Jannah are remembering the good deeds that they did. The people in Hellfire are saying, Lo, if I had another chance, I would have done those same deeds. Wasted potential, wasted blessings. Now here's the thing. When we talk about this concept of muhasaba, this concept of holding ourselves to account, you ask yourself, what made Umar ibn Khattab anhu capable of achieving his full potential? And again, no one would doubt that he achieved this full potential except for him radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Was that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to do al-muhasaba. He used to do self-accounting, self-accountability. Hold yourself accountable before you are held to account. Weigh yourselves before you are weighed. And so you have to think to yourself, if I could 
get a master class from Umar al Khattab radiallahu muhasaba. If I could watch Umar radiallahu anhu in his private moments before he went to sleep at night and he thought to himself what he could have done better, where he fell short that maybe no one else caught but him, and what he thinks he could have done better. Imagine that thought process. Because it's one thing to do muhasaba of your dhunub. It's one thing to take into account your sins and to say, this is where I sin, this is where I sin. A lot of us probably don't even do that, right? Where at least at night, if, can you imagine if you took a few minutes every night and you, and you went back and you replayed the tape for that day? And you said, I backbited here. I, I messed up here. I did this sin. And you sought Allah's forgiveness every night for that. What a person of ihsan would do as well, what a person of excellence would do in that muhasaba is they would also replay the tape and say, I could have done this and I could have done this and I could have done that. The opportunity costs where I could have outperformed. I missed the moments where I could have pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I missed an opportunity where I could have pleased Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see, one of the beauties of ihsan, one of the beauties of excellence is that you set your own standards and you set them in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And you're not waiting for anyone else to set an expectation for you to do better. You're not waiting for anyone else to tell you about how great you could potentially be. You're not waiting for anyone else to invite you to a higher degree of Jannah. You're not waiting for anyone else to tell you that you don't need to live a life where you're merely getting by and you're being a bystander to the imperative of da'wah that we have in this country to spread the message of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. That you don't need to be a bystander to the Islamic work and capacity building and the relief work and the khidmah and the service. You don't need to just be a bystander that opens a YouTube video every once in a while or watches something here or does something there. But you also can be a part of it and you're not waiting for someone else to tell you to be a part of it. You invite yourself into those rooms, you invite yourself into those efforts because you have a standard that you set for yourself and you're not going to wait for anyone else to push you into Jannah. You know, I always found it very interesting that when you read about the rich companions of the Prophet Sallallahu but I always thought to myself when I went to Medina, where's the, the palace of Abdurrahman ibn Awf Where's the palace of Uthman ibn Affan Where are the palaces of these rich companions? Where are their old, you know, grounds where they used to have this and they used to have that? Isn't it amazing that none of that is locatable at this point? The wealth that Abu Bakr anhu had in Mecca, the best properties, where are they? Where did they go? They don't exist anymore because they have been converted into sources of continuous charity for those people. You won't find a palace for Uthman anhu, but you'll find palm trees and gardens that are funded by his initial donations in awqaf, potential. And I guarantee you that's going to be far more beloved to him on the Day of Judgment than a palace that he gave up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know what Allah did leave? Allah Azza wa left the dwellings of some of these arrogant, powerful people. Masakina, go ahead and look at them. Go ahead and look at them. Allah left these incredible, exquisite, architectural forms of genius and innovation that were put forth by His blessing through a people who never acknowledged the source of that blessing. So you could look at them, you see the palaces, you see the fortresses of those who rejected the Prophet ﷺ in Medina, you see the palaces, you see the, the dwellings and the stone carvings of some of the destroyed peoples in that region. What benefit does it give them on the Day of Judgment? And can you imagine the source of regret when they see that on the Day of Judgment and say, that could have been something so much more. That could have been a palace in Jannah. Now it's not just wealth, because wealth is the easiest quantifiable example. It's time, it's time. People are too comfortable being bystanders. Don't let your potential go to waste because everything that Allah gave you of a unique quality, a unique potential, is a unique opportunity for a special place in Jannah. Don't let it be a source of your regret on the Day of Judgment. You want to have as little lows, if only, at the time of your death, because there are people that Allah Azza wa mentions, that when they're dying, they're saying that. As little of those as possible when the Day of Judgment is established, then you know that things just got much more serious. And none of those at the border of Hellfire where hopefully you will not enter bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. You want to have as little of those lows, of those ifs as possible at the time of your death on the Day of Judgment and at the time of your entrance into whatever destination Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us be amongst the people of Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. 
of the highest degree of paradise. May Allah guide us to that which is pleasing to Him and then grant us sincerity in pursuing the means to please Him and then grant us steadfastness upon that path of guidance and then grant us entrance into the abode of His pleasure. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of the blessings that He has given to us in this life to be converted into blessings in the afterlife as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for that which is pleasing to Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those whom He is pleased with and make us amongst those al muhsineen those who excel in being pleasing to Him. And may Allah Azza wa Jal count us amongst those who love Him and who are beloved to Him and who surround His beloved one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the dose of A'la. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.